Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I made it my decision that I'm going to rejoice in it and be glad. And I'm hoping you make that same decision as well. Welcome to Sunday School, Church of God, 4601 South Drexel Boulevard, Chicago, Illinois, 60653. I want to say welcome to the saints. Good to see you all. I'm logging in right now to Periscope so we can all kind of fellowship together. And welcome to our visitors and those that will watch in the week replay. We thank you for joining us. We pray that God will bless you in your soul for his glory. So at this time, why don't we acknowledge the Lord in prayer and ask God to be in our midst. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord, you are God of everything. You are a good God and a faithful God. Even in hard times, Father God, you're good, Father God. So we give you the glory and the honor and praise this morning. We ask that you would be in our class. We need your guidance, your direction, oh God. We want the word to fall on good ground, oh God, for the glory of God. Bless those heroes, those special needs that are among us. We ask that you would meet that need. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So before we get into all the good stuff that we have planned for you today, I want to say um, a special welcome and a hello to a Periscope viewer that reached out to the Church of God through Facebook, Shacken Buck. If you're watching this morning, I want you to know that I've reached out to you through Facebook, and we can continue our conversation there for the glory of God. We heard, we saw your request, and we have responded. So now, let's see. Lesson four, we're talking about the character of a bishop. We're on lesson four, and today's lesson is on the character of a bishop. So I'm waiting to see if I'm logging in, and you know what? Technology is doing its thing. It's being some time in. <laughs> now I can't get the broadcast, so I'm refreshing. Bear with me for the glory of God. So I will give you a head start. While I'm logging in, you can look and see. This is a question I've been putting out before the saints time and time again this quarter, but there's something missing. Let's see if our Periscope viewers can find what is missing. All right, I'm going to try and log in via my phone instead of my tablet and see if I can connect with you all. Are you ready? I'm going to give you the answers and then I'm going to check your work, okay? <laughs> So there's something missing. Is it one thing missing? Is it two things missing? I'm not going to tell you, but I'm going to show you. There's two things missing, and maybe you got it, maybe you didn't. What was missing? A holy life. You remember the other one? The ordinances. A holy life and the ordinances. Why do we go over this? We, we're teaching you fundamental truths and principles that differentiate us as the church of God, the body of Christ, and all of these components are essential for us having the truth and maintaining the experiences they refer to right here. And one of the things about an elder or a bishop for the church of God, for God's one true church, you have to understand these principles of what? The Church of God stands for. Okay, so I hope you got it out there, Periscope. I'm going to see if I can get in because it's still not working for me. Okay, we're going to move on a little bit. More questions for you, all right? All right, so this week's lesson is about the character of a bishop. And there are two words in the New Testament for bishop that have the same meaning. There were a lot of definitions given in the lesson, but I'm looking for two specific ones, and we're going to see if you all can find it. Give me one more minute so I can see if I can get in to Periscope 
on either phone. All right, I hope you're looking, but I'm about to give you the answer, okay? So there are two words for bishop, and we read about them in our lesson. So number one is an overseer. A bishop can also be an overseer. Thank you for a volunteer giving me their phone. Okay, this helps me out a lot, because now I can really kind of connect. All right, let me see how. <laughs> Very good. Okay, an overseer. Oh, oh, I see Sister Celia, Brother Judge. All right, and let's see. And an elder. Very good. Very good. An overseer is the pastor. So, yes, if you put down pastor, you got it right. An overseer and a pastor. And I put the scriptural references here. So that if anybody wants to go back and search it out, guess what? You have access to do that. And one of the things I'll tell you, even our visitors, if you are looking for places that are really standing for the truth, they should be able to support their doctrine with scripture. Right. It should be line upon line and yeah. precept upon precept. Right. And right. not one single scripture should make a doctrine. Right. The Bible verifies itself. Mm -hmm. Even God requires that says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses mm -hmm. right. that everything be established. And guess what? The word does the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the character of a bishop. And if your bishop isn't rooted and grounded in the word, guess what? Watch out. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not God's man because God's men and women are rooted and grounded in the word of God. Amen. I remember I was uh, going to a church I won't say the name, but uh, we would go to church, and I remember one message where he was talking about the dry bones in the valley and the Ezekiel oh, yeah. vision, so, so. and he was talking about, and the foot bone connected to the ankle, right, right. and the ankle bone connected to the leg bone, and even the leg bone, but this was his message, right. and everybody's sitting there, yeah, oh, yeah. pastor, sing it, sing it.
you are not in the church of God. Right. Okay? So we're going to go a little bit farther. All right. Periscope, you got a little bit of work to do today. So for this lesson, who are we talking about? We have three questions. You can answer T for true, F for false. And it makes it a little bit easier when you answer the question if you put one, and if your answer is true, you can put one T or one false, and then I can know which one you're answering. So let's go over these questions, Periscope, and let's see how well we do together. Sister Carenza, would you please? True or false, the letter to Timothy was written to Timothy while he was laboring at Corinth. All right, Periscope, viewers, friends. Thanks of God. Was the letter to Timothy written to Timothy when he was at Corinth? If you believe that is true, you can enter T for true. If you don't believe that's true, then you should enter one false or one F or one true. Let's see. Oh, we're getting a little bit of mixed bags here. We got some that say true. One that says false. Ah. I kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? The answer for number one. Did I push the button? Is false. It's false. And then I kind of did, you know, a little bit yeah, too much. <laughs> Don't look. Don't look. Gave it away. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Number two. <laughs> I just went all the way back. Maybe some of you all weren't paying attention. So <laughs> let's read number two for the glory of God. True or false? The Ephesian church was mostly Jewish converts. And so number two, it's false. It was not mostly Jewish converts. Okay. I'm not going to push that button as much. <laughs> it was not. Ephesians, you know, in that area, it was around the, uh, the Aegean Sea. It was really a lot of different nationalities, a lot of Greek influences. Yeah. They had some Jewish people because the Jewish people weren't relegated to one particular area. That's their faith. But that congregation was mostly Greek converts to the faith, okay? And that kind of explains why they had to give them a lot of instructions on how to behave themselves in the church of God. So question number three, how about that? Let's go to question number three, sis. Timothy's mission was to help the elders at Ephesus to govern well. True or false? Was that Timothy's mission? I'm bringing this out Oh, I see Sister Joanne. I see your answer, Sister Joanne. All right, Sister, who else is that? Very good, very good. What's his mission? And the reason I ask this question is because there are a lot of people who have created a structure of organization, a hierarchy, and they call it part of the will of God. But when you look at the pattern in the scripture, you see something differently. So for question number three, you know what the answer is? True. His job was to help the elders to govern, but his job was not to govern the elders right. and the people. And that is something that has been lost in most mainstream religion. Sure. Mainstream religion has created a hierarchy Big eyes, little use, and that's not the pattern in the scripture, okay? So maybe we'll touch on that again a little bit later. So how, now we're going to talk about the memory verse, and I couldn't think of a way to do it where we could engage, but I thought about this. There's so many terms in this, we can talk about that for the glory of God. Now, I want you to look at here. Can you see the little sheep's face right here? I want you to look at him. He's, I, I think Sister Deborah taught on the sheep and the goats <laughs> last Friday night. Go back if you didn't get it. But look at him. I believe the sheep is looking to see what kind of leader he has. Shouldn't that, shouldn't that sheep be looking like, but can you really help me? Yes. Is your life going to impact my life in a positive way? Because when the sheep get tired of living, you know, trying to do the best they can, they're looking for a God 
godly leader. Yes. And this scripture, our memory verse for this week, it has a lot of meat in there to show us what a godly leader should look like, what their character and their actions. Sister Carenza, can you uh, read that for me? First Timothy 3 and 2. A bishop then must be blameless. Yes. The husband of one wife. Yes. Vigilant. Mm -hmm. Sober. Of good behavior. Given to hospitality. Apt to teach. So, Periscope viewers, where you are, do you look at your leaders? Do you see these qualities? Why? Because this is the word of God. And if that's God's man or God's woman, guess what? They're going to follow God's word. Amen. So we're going to be discerning sheep because the scripture told us we only follow Christ's voice. We don't follow another by the grace of right. God. So let's dig into this memory verse a little bit, but I've got to ask a couple of questions. First, it said a bishop must be blameless. So I have a couple of questions for you, Sister Carenza. <laughs> How should a bishop or elder be blameless? A- Credit score of 800 or above. Lord bless. Oh, B, Lord. accident free driving record. Or C, having a godly, consistent life. Thank the Lord. All right. Periscope, don't let me down. I think you all can get this. How should a bishop be blameless? And as you're answering this, I want you to consider. Blameless doesn't mean you're not blamed for things. Right. right. Mm -hmm. What blameless means is that if a charge is levied against you or thrown at you, that it's not founded in truth. Right. right. So there's a lot of times you see in the scripture where the saints were blamed for a lot of things, yes. but it was not grounded in truth. Mm -hmm. So being blameless doesn't Amen. mean that your name doesn't get dragged through the mud. Right. It's something about people. Mm -hmm. People do yeah. things like that, but that does not mean you're not qualified to be an elder. Amen. So, oh my goodness, it looks like that question was too easy. <laughs> you all are chiming in and everybody is saying basically the same thing. <laughs> See, having a godly and consistent life. Amen. That is what being blameless refers to. And we've got to remember, it doesn't mean you're not accused of anything. But there's nothing legitimately wrong with mm -hmm. your walk, you're not committing sin, and you're consistently living a holy life. Sure. All right? That's blameless. A little more. What do we have there, sis? What does the husband of one wife mean? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, Lord. All right. A, you are not a polygamist. Okay. B, you have not divorced and remarried unlawfully. All right. Or C, you can be unmarried or a widow slash widower. Mm -hmm. So, the scripture says the husband of one wife. What is a husband of one wife? Which one of these applies? Mm -hmm. Periscope, what say ye? Why do I ask this? Because, you know, a lot of the problems we're dealing with is because people don't understand what that refers to. And people build doctrines that divide God's people in ways that God doesn't divide them. True. Okay? So, Periscope, is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Or is it all of the above? <laughs> Sometimes I throw that in, you know, <laughs> just to kind of get you scratching your head and thinking about it. So we've got a lot of answers coming in. I see, oh my goodness, a lot of people like, A, you are not a polygamist. A polygamist is somebody who has multiple spouses, generally a man that has a lot of wives or more than one wife, okay? I see some people that say, B, they say you have not divorced and remarried unlawfully. Mm -hmm. And I've got, oh, I see uh, Brother Sean, he says, oh, Shaxton, I see you. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I reached out to you. Yes, all right. right. Brother Sean, very good. All of them, all of them are right. What does that mean? One of them, you have 
have not been divorced and we married unlawfully. You know, there's a lot of error about oh, yes. this. Yes. It's a lot of error unneedlessly. Mm -hmm. Stick with what the word says. Stick Amen. with what right. Jesus said. Right. Okay? You are not a polygamist. Why is this essential? Why is this important? The next slide, Lord says the same, will show you. And then, it's, this is included as well. You can be unmarried or a widow widower. Mm -hmm. Just because you don't have a wife at that moment doesn't mean you're not qualified to right. be an elder. Right. And a lot of people, they'll accept this exception. But they won't accept this exception. Right. Mm -hmm. Think about it. God is a consistent and a fair judge. Yes, yes. he is. Yes, if he, he is. says no, you if you're not married, guess what? You can still be a, a pastor. What if they're a widow? Mm -hmm. You can't boot them out the position or widow work, boot them out the position because they're no longer married. Sure. Think about it. God is an equitable God. Uh -huh. A little yeah. bit further. Polygamy in the scripture. Look at all these examples. All these examples. We read about them. Abraham, remember when Sarah gave her maid to him to be a wife? Yeah. You can check that out in Genesis, the 16th chapter. Didn't work out that good. Right. <laughs> Esau, he went down to the uh, Canaanites and he got married to them down there. It didn't work out so well. Jacob got tricked. Mm -hmm. Remember sure. by Laban? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Elkanah. Anybody remember Elkanah? Wow. Hannah. Yes. Hannah's husband, right? Yes. <laughs> Hannah was vexed <laughs> by the other woman. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at this. It's not really working right, right? Mm -hmm. David? Mm -hmm. Insatiable. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> David. <laughs> David. Really no excuse. Solomon <laughs> just as bad. Right. 
but your wives. Right. He understood that part of their Jewish culture was polygamy. Yeah. It was part of the heathen culture, the Gentiles as well. Mm -hmm. But guess what? It was not what God instituted in the beginning. Amen. And one of the things about the gospel day, God was restoring mankind back to where he fell from. Amen. And God is pointing this out here. He said, yeah, God allowed you. Moses gave you the writ of divorce. He allowed yeah. you to do it. For your hardness of heart. If you were tired of her, if you wanted a new model, whatever, because of your hard heart, God allowed you to do it. You could put away your wives. But he said, but from the beginning, it was not so. And then he says here in verse 9, why did he do this? Because Jesus said, these words that I speak unto you, they shall judge you at the last day. Mm -hmm. And he said, his words are spirit and life. Yeah. So what does he say? And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. Except means it's an exception. Right. And shall marry another committed adultery. Mm -hmm. You divorce, there's no fornication, that's adultery. Right. Sure. Exactly. That's all it's saying. Sure. Right. And whosoever so. marrieth her which is put away doth commit mm -hmm. adultery. Mm -hmm. So what do we see? Even while Jesus was here, he was dealing with issues of polygamy, mm -hmm. issues of unlawful divorces. And guess what? It didn't change when Jesus wasn't here. Mm -hmm. So go a little bit further. We're going to look at some of the information about after Jesus' day. Sister Carenza, would you read that for us? Yes. Historians have documented a dispute between Roman government and the Jewish custom of polygamy. So this, that first point right there, it's documented in history. Mm -hmm. That even when the Romans had subjugated the Jewish culture or the Jewish people in Rome, they had an issue with polygamy back then. Mm -hmm. What else? The scholar Josephus notes uh -uh. polygamy as a recognized institution. Mm -hmm. So Josephus, he's a recognized historian. If you look up the culture during biblical time, a lot of it is documented and verified by Josephus. And he's written there. Polygamy was an issue, mm -hmm. all right? Antonian yeah. decivitates Roman official. He was a Roman official, yes. Gave citizenship to Jews who were polygamists. Oh, during that mm -hmm. same time. Wasn't it the Jews, that uh, the Romans that actually did the crucifixion? This was going on through Jesus' time and even mm -hmm. after. Mm -hmm. Because these are later uh, right. officials. And how about Augustine? Augustine wrote in the second half of the fourth century that that the good purpose of marriage, however, is better promoted by one husband with one wife mm -hmm. than by a husband with several wives. It's shown plainly enough by the very first union of a married pair, which was made by the divine being himself. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is the outside people trying to tell the religious people. You all should stick with the Bible. You okay. should stick with what God set up. Right. These are the outside people. Wow. There's something about this human nature. This flesh wants to go to one extreme or another. Mm -hmm. They want to go all the way to the left or all the way to sure. the right. Yeah. At extremes. Mm -hmm. That's just something about flesh. Mm -hmm. So we know that this is a big problem. So why am I bringing this out? Because when you deal with why Paul told Timothy, the husband of one wife, it's because it was pervasive in their society, mm -hmm. in their yeah. world. They mm -hmm. had so many issues. And God was bringing mankind back to the standard sure. of holiness mm -hmm. sure. that was created when he created man mm -hmm. and woman. Sure. So yeah. t Paul had to talk to Timothy and said, this is an issue for the Jewish culture, the Gentile culture. You're starting a work. Now you have to instruct them in how they should believe. Mm -hmm. He wasn't creating another type of doctrine that some people purport as true. So when you look at the word of God, you look at what Jesus said, you look at how the gospel harmonizes with the Old Testament 
and God gives us power to live that. Remember how he says, um, Moses said, because of the hardness of your heart, didn't Christ come to give us a new heart? Amen. <laughs> and a new spirit. <laughs> you know, he's already rectified the situation. So now in the body, because marriage is supposed to exemplify Christ and the church, guess what? You got to get them back into what good marriages look like. Yeah. Uh -huh. And in order for them to see it, they need to see it in their leadership. Amen. Now, do you know there are people today who call themselves Christians who believe in polygamy? Sure. They practice it in sure. the United States. Sure. And I looked and I was, this is supposed to be symbolic of, remember the ten virgins? Oh my goodness. Five were wise <laughs> and five were foolish. You know they use that parable as justification for them having multiple wives. Oh, wow. Because the the parable talks about the bridegroom, right. you know, and all these five virgins. Isn't that foolish? Yes. yes. You know what it is? Flesh just wants to have its, its way. way. Yes. Flesh just wants yes. to have yes. its way. That's all it is. You're going to ignore all the good things in the scripture that point to what God's will is and then pick out a parable right. mm -hmm. and say this parable is a teaching on marriage mm -hmm. and ignore all the teachings mm -hmm. that are in the scripture, mm -hmm. including the one that I just read in Matthew 19. Yeah. So you know what? It matters where you get fed. It matters what the character of the bishop, the elders that you worship under. All right, we're going to go a little bit further. The next thing is being sober. Yeah. Being sober. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. So let's look at what sobriety means. When you're talking about being sober, sober covers not just physical right. in your body, right. but mentally. Oh, yeah. Mentally. And I looked it up, and it talks about abstaining from wine. Mm -hmm. All right? You got a lot of people who call themselves Christians that will fight you tooth uh, and nail yeah. yes. about abstaining from wine. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to ask you something. Man has enough sense that when you go to Alcoholic Anonymous website and they talk about sobriety, what do they instruct their people? Stop drinking. Yeah. Uh, of course. Stop yeah. drinking. Mm -hmm. You are not sober if you're drinking. That's right. That's right. They yeah, give yeah. chips and rewards and acknowledge the milestones that yeah, people who have maintained mm -hmm. their sobriety. Mm -hmm. yes. But then you have Christians, people mm -hmm. who call themselves Christians, drinking who don't drink. maintain their sobriety. Right. But they're saying they're sober. Right. Let's see what the word of God says. So we're talking about abstaining from rough wine and keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulties. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you're sober, you're going to always look and say, uh-uh, that might cause a problem. Sure. That, that might have a bad impact. Yeah. Sure. Uh-huh, I, I have to shun the very appearance of evil. Mm -hmm. Let me know. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sit in the bar at the bar stool drinking my Diet Coke. Why? Because it looks kind of evil. Right, yes. right. And, and I'm a Christian. And how am I going to turn and witness to you that I go to right. church? I know they do it, but that ain't a witness of God. No. Right. So we're going to look at what the scripture says about it. And we're not going to read all of these, but I wanted you to be able to see all of this preponderance of evidence about what the scripture says about sobriety. So, Ephesians 4.27, you go back and check these out. But it tells us, neither give place to the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see people out there drinking, acting they like the devil, the guess devil. what? They gave him place. Right. They're intoxicated. They can't make good decisions. Uh, back in the 1800s and still in some place overseas, you know what they call alcohol? They call them spirits. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what they do. They do it now. They, they give you spirits. Yes. Yes. Teeny tiny people want to fight big guys. Why? Because they're yes. intoxicated. Mm -hmm. They got the spirit on them. God doesn't want his people like that. Not at right? all. Mm -hmm. Titus 1 and 8, it talks about 
The saints of God, the character of a bishop is a, a lover of good men. Mm -hmm. Sober. Titus 2 and 6. Guess what it says? Young men, they exhort likewise to be sober. Yep. Yes. Titus 2 and 12. We should live soberly mm -hmm. and righteously. 1 mm -hmm. Peter 1 13. Be sober. 4 and 7. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. How in the world can you watch and pray and you drive? 1 Peter 5 and 8. It says, Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, what has a roaring lion mm -hmm. walking about seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. You're sitting over there yeah, yeah. tipsy. Guess on. what? If I was the devil, a lion, right. and I saw you staggering over there, guess oh, what? Yeah. I jump. Yeah. I'm going to get you. Same thing spiritually speaking. We have to be sober. And that's sobriety. The world has enough sense to understand. You cannot be sober and intoxicated at the same time. Right. Right. How much more so saints of God, people who are supposed to represent Christ. Good. It's a Dang. reproach for your preacher to yeah. be a drinker. Yes. Amen. Have a bottle in his office. Amen. Oh God. To pull out they shot do. glasses. They do. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. It's oh. a reproach. Oh, yes. Yes. Amen. So let's weigh this out. Let's look at the pro wine scripture and let's talk about that compared to a lot of the scriptures I've already mentioned and additional ones. Sister Carenza, can you read that pro wine scripture? Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Drink no longer water, yep. but use a little wine for the stomach's sake mm -hmm. and thine often infirmity. Anybody mm -hmm. ever hear that from people yep. where they start, oh, yeah. Yeah. But now you got preachers and Such teachers. Like 
read it as well, but one of these pictures, it's talking about how the THC in marijuana, mm -hmm. it affects the synapses of the brain, mm -hmm. and information comes, and the synapses is how it's related to the brain, and it builds up a barrier in between the synapses and the brain, so now you have a lag time. Yeah. You can't respond as quickly. And when you're smoking this stuff, you know what it does? That natural chemical that makes you feel good about life, it cuts that off. Mm -hmm. And that's how people become dependent on sure. weed, kush, uh -huh. and loud, and that's all that other all kind of stuff. stuff. They become dependent <laughs> on it because this marijuana, this THC that's in it, has caused them to be addicted. Yes. And now they can't feel happy unless they got their smoke on. Yep. My Unless God. they got they, they weed and they laugh. It mm -hmm. affects the central nervous system. It mm -hmm. affects the throat. People are getting cancer of the larynx and mm. lung cancer and all of that. All of the esophagus because they're smoking. And we have people who are calling themselves Christians, uh -huh. uh, be, uh, deacons, mm -hmm. all of that. And they're smoking marijuana. Yeah. Not so. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how they legalize it. It right. doesn't matter if you can smoke it in your home. In God's right. church, God's people don't smoke marijuana right. because they're sober. They're living righteously Amen. and godly. And I thank God the scriptures I showed you, they deal with sobriety. So as soon as the world rolls out something else, guess what? It covers that dish sure, too. Right. You can't okay. have your oxy and mm -hmm. all of that and your Vicodin and be high as a kite and just because that's that's a a, a suburban drug that doesn't mean you're yes. right with god Not you have to be sober Amen. all right yeah. and you know sunday school is for us to talk about these issues that pertain to us now mm -hmm. because god does not want us to be ignorant amen so that's the character of a bishop and here i got a couple of little pictures that talk about more of the character. It goes on to say you got to be of good behavior. Mm -hmm. You got to be hospitable. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. I think about there's some churches you go to, you can't get to the pastor. Mm -hmm. It's uh -huh. armor bearers. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They, they, they like bodyguards. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> For real though. Yeah. Definitely and oh, you got a member of thousands of people coming to service. He don't know you. He right. ain't trying to be hospitable to you. Mm -hmm. They tell you, go make an appointment with this one or make an appointment with that one. But he'll ask you about your tithes. Sure, he'll God. ask you if you sent your money in. You know Hospitality. Mm -hmm. Act to well, teach. Well. Let's go to Galatians 5.21 mm -hmm. and then Mark 7.13 for the glory of God. Let's read that, please, sis. Indians, murders, yes. drunkenness. Oh, listen to this. Revelings. Oh, and wait a minute, wait a minute. Life. Revelings. Party. And such life. There are too many preachers that party. Uh -huh. Some party in the church houses. Mm -hmm. They get into mm -hmm. the church house and they plan, oh, if you was young in the 60s, I got Sam Cook for you. And if you were in the mm -hmm. 70s, I got so and so for you. Uh, uh, Funkadelic and all oh, this yeah. other kind of stuff. They go all throughout the generation reveling in the church house. Yeah. Teaching people carnality and worldliness. Yes. They're not showing the character of a true deacon uh, mm -hmm. elder. Did we finish? In what such life. Oh, in such life. Which, of the which I tell you before, yes. as mm -hmm. I have also told you in time past, yes. that they which do mm -hmm. such mm -hmm. things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. You see that little phrase, such like? Mm -hmm. That's covering everything else. Right. Everything I don't mention. And I, I'll tell you this, in Periscope, when I say such life, if you got something in your life, God is going to put put a name on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. like, yeah, that baggie you got sitting in front of you, that edible you got sitting in front of you. The Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. when he's talking to you, he's going to tell you what your such like is. Amen. Because God, that's how God deals with us to get saved from our sins. Yeah. Mark 7, 13, please. Making the word of God of none effect. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. They're out here in their churches serving wine and communion. People know they need to be sober, but their tradition means more to them so they can continue to drink. Mm -hmm. It means more to them than what God teaches in the 
word of God. When you're under somebody that's doing that, you need to get out of there. Amen. Read that again, sis. Making the word of God a non effective. Because they're ignoring the word of God. Sure. Tradition. Ineffective. I like my tradition better. What yeah. else? Which ye have delivered, uh -huh. and many such like things do ye. Again, many such like things do ye. You'll know whether that is a man or a woman of God when they only do what the scripture instructs us to do. All right, a little bit more. Oh, here's the scripture. Let's go to this. I really like this because it's really dealing with the character again. 1 Timothy 3 and 1. Can you read that for me, sis? Yes, ma'am. This is a true saying. Yes. If a man desire the office of a bishop, yes. he desires a good work. So I go back to this because there's something in this. It says here, if a man desire, if a man desires, mm -hmm. desire. You know, in false churches, they give gifts one to another. Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I witnessed it myself. Yep. Came in and a friend of mine, we were going to church and because he paid a lot of tithes, they wanted him to be a deacon. Yep. Why do they like he must have money? <laughs> you know, I've seen it. They standing up there and at the altar call when they call themselves opening the door of the church. Right. Uh -huh. The deacons would turn and look at him. Come yep. to Jesus. Yep. Come to Jesus. Didn't even ask him to get saved. But they knew he made money. Mm. But a true man or woman of God has a certain type of desire. And when you look up the Greek root of this word, it has the essence of this. One who seeks after something in such a way as they stretch themselves to attain it. Amen. When you are a man or woman of God, God will inspire you to get out of yourself, get out of your ways, get out of your comfort zone, get into the word of God, get deeply rooted in the word and in the love of God. So you can work with God's people. And before he does that, he's working on you. Mm -hmm. Your desire will cause you to look over your life so you can root out anything that's not like God. Amen. And see, that desire is essential. Because how can I be an example to you if I have to conquer my own flesh right. or my right. own tendency? Yes. What tendencies? Not outward sin. But you have people who are impatient. And guess what? I can't teach you to be patient if I don't know how to be patient myself. Right. So that desire to be more for God will cause me to work on my own patience, mm -hmm. my own temperance. Um, a lot of things about us and how we grew up, that desire to be used for God, that's where that stretching occurred. Mm -hmm. You may have had a problem with men in your life. You may have had a... a a, a, a dad who called everybody names and you come out and you're saved and you're like yeah that knucklehead and that, that you know and God's like wait a minute wait a minute man you're not person but you got to get rid of that mm -hmm. everybody ain't a knucklehead and an armpit and you know you got to get out of that you learn that and you got to be more like me Amen. oh Lord I didn't see it I see what you mean now I don't want to cause an offense Right. That's the desire that bishop or that person that wants to be a bishop or an elder must have. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you have the desire, if a man desire the office of a bishop, the office, this place right here of a bishop, your job is to help people get perfected in Christ. Mm -hmm. So guess what? you got to be an expert at getting yourself perfected in Christ. Mm -hmm. You have to show diligence in you measuring up to the word of God, growing in grace, being able to comprehend with all the saints. Because when you deal with people, there's such a different breadth and height and depth yes. with all people, whether they're saved or unsaved. During my time when I first got saved, guess what? There was a certain culture in the world, in my 20s, guess what? There were certain things we just didn't do because it, it wasn't us. Right. But you know what? This generation, they're exposed to so much more at a young age. Mm -hmm. They don't know whether they're coming or Anything going. And, and you cannot be mentally so standoffish. You did what? Right. You did what? Right. 
Now, yes. you have to be able to comprehend yes. all people yep. because God died to save yep. them. Yep. That office, you got to experience that first. And if you have a leader, an elder, or a pastor, and you don't see these characteristics in their life, maybe the board voted them in. Right. Maybe the board had a couple of uh, preachers come in and uh, interview for the position, yeah. preaching a revival, Very true. and then everybody like, yeah, we like Bishop yeah. so-and-so from Friendship so-and-so church, and the way he preached, ha <laughs> ha now all of that, all in fact to say, ah, 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 you don't even know the man's character. No, not at all. If you're yeah, in a place yeah. like that, you're it's not in God's, God's church. church. You are not in God's church. Amen. Right. So if you desire that office, you desire a good work. But I want to tell you this, it's work. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's work. It's work, dear ones. I hope there are people that are watching, that are desiring more. Yes. And if you're desiring more, don't be discouraged because of the great amount of work that you have to do on yourself That's first. That's right. Yeah. In order to be able to work with God's people. Amen. Keep working on yourself. It's a good desire, but be responsible. Amen. When God tells you you're too close to the world, step back. Yep. Amen. Amen. There's no dress, no entertainment, no uh, custom of the world that should be worth more to you than God's approval. Amen. Amen. You have to That's be at a point sense. where even if there's no sin in it, if it causes questions, yes. you will abstain from the very appearance of evil. Yes. If you don't have that heart in you to sacrifice like that for the gospel, you, you will not that. be able to be used to the fullest by God. Amen. Amen. Okay, a little bit further. Oh, again, not given to wine. What does that say, sister? Not given to wine. Yes. No striker. Oh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You would think we shouldn't have to say that. Hmm. Let me ask you a question. A striker is talking about somebody who fights. Mm -hmm. A brawler. Mm -hmm. You could have fought people out in the street. You could have fought in the home with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if you did that in sin, you couldn't be saved? Mm, of course. You could be saved. Mm -hmm. God saved you. He forgive you for that. Mm -hmm. Could you be an elder? You had that in your past? Sure. Could you be an elder? Sure. You know, because it's past, right? Mm -hmm. It's all under the blood. There are some things people teach that's in the past under the blood. And they teach it now as inhibiting people from being an elder. Mm, mm. When I'm talking about you did all this stuff in sin before you even came to the church, they're not holding that against you. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yet you have people who say if you got married in sin sure. and got divorced in sin, right. mm -hmm. now that you're saved, they'll tell you you can't do this. Uh, all right. Why did God right. forgive all of this right. and not forgive that? Amen. Amen. Think about the character of God. That is not consistent. Right. God said a false weight oh, is an abomination so. to him. Yeah. All right, my sister, not no striker. Not greedy, a filthy looker. Yes. But patient. Yes. Not a brawler. Yes. Not covetous. All of this makes a difference. I, and we answered the question, could they have been uh, before salvation? I just really wanted to drive that point out. Because you'll have people who will say things people did before they got saved disqualifies them. Not true. God forget. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't, uh, God wouldn't have used Paul. Right. right. Come on. Oh, yes. Otherwise, he just would have gone. Oh, God, I'm talking. I saw you. I saw you when they killed Stephen. You were there cheering. God would not have used Paul. God could have said, Peter, you had been saved. Then you, you cursed and you denied me. I'm not dealing with you anymore. Mm -hmm. God is not like that. God yeah. is very consistent and very fair. Amen. Uh, so here, we're talking about here. How you are at home. All right. Mm -hmm. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, oh, no. yes. how shall he take care of the church of God? Oh, now, I've got a challenge to you out there in Periscope. There's a question. 
Can you cite other scriptures where the church of God is mentioned in the Bible? So, Periscope viewers, there are at least six or seven other, other scriptures where the church of God is mentioned in the Bible. Let's see if you can name them while I talk about this. It says here, if a man know not how to rule his own household. You know that word rule means to govern? Mm -hmm. There are some people who take that that word rule to make it a heavy task, a hard taskmaster. But God tells the deacons, the elders, you know, you're not a lord over God's heritage. Mm -hmm. You have to rule in compassion. Yes. And it's the same thing in the home. Yes. You learn how to lead, to govern, to make good decisions for the benefit of the home. You learn that in the home so that when you come and you begin to exercise yourself among God's people, you have the experience of how to deal with people correctly. Right. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I see. Some of you all are bringing them in. Very good. I saw what? Acts 2028. 20, we got that. Very good. Um, anybody get the other one? Oh, you all know Acts 2028. 20, anybody know some of these other ones? <laughs> but why do I say this? Because there are a lot of people that wonder why are you called the church of God? Why? Because the scripture calls Amen. the body of Christ the church of God. And he tells them how you have to learn to rule the church of God. Why? Because that's the name of God's people, the church of God. And as we talked about it, oh, you all got 1 Corinthians 10, 32. I wanted you all to see all of these references to the church of God. Amen. We didn't make this name up. I didn't have a dream and see a rock flying in and a, a red crow, and then all of a sudden I come up and I say, God told, show me flying rock, red crow. No, we're sticking with the book. Amen. If this book, and it is, what's going to test us in the judgment, we better have all the answers from the book. Amen. We better have that down pat for the glory of God. All right, so... Check it out. If you've never studied it, Converse, go through the scriptures. Look at the church of God. Understand why we teach what we teach. Because mm -hmm. you study to show yourself approved. Very good. Thank you, Brother Malcolm. Brother Mario. Thank you. Other things. Isn't, I like this. That's for me in my house. Talk about how that Amen. bishop, he leads his house. You know, you lead sheep. You don't drive sheep. You don't get a whip. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not what it's talking about. You lead sheep. Mm -hmm. Sister Deborah taught on that. Not a novice. To be an elder, you can't be a novice. Mm -hmm. You know what the devil will try and do? God will put a calling on your life. He'll have, the devil will try and have you run mm -hmm. before you have the grace to execute mm -hmm. it. Because mm -hmm. the devil loves to prop people up and then Lord, kick the prop out. Yeah. Yeah. And then they go, huh? Then they have a huge Lord. fall and they can't come back from it. Uh -huh. But if you take your time and let God build you on that foundation, you'll never fall. Amen. You'll never fall. Amen. Good report. I, I, I couldn't find anything but a background check. But guess what? <laughs> when they go to your neighbors, they shouldn't, your neighbors shouldn't have anything to say. Maybe, you know. Why? Oh, because yes. you have a good report. Amen. Natural things too. Cut your grass. You know, oh, yes. be a Christian and you know your grass ain't oh, cut yes. off the block and you passing out track. They're natural things that have an impact. Cut your grass. Amen. That makes your witness unaffected. You don't have to work. Mm -hmm. If you you're talking and they're like, you need to stop going to church and cut your grass, sir. You know. <laughs> Things yep. like that makes a difference. It, does. it really does. You'd be surprised. Your your neighbors won't want to hear you talk about Jesus. That's and right. They're looking at you know. They need a machete to get to the door. Come right. on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The watchmen. The watchmen. We're getting toward the end of things. The watchmen. Let's read this scripture because oh, yes. this. Amen. This bishop. This overseer. This elder has a solemn duty. And Sister Corinth is going to read that for us. Ezekiel 33 and 8. Yes. When I say unto the wicked, yes. O wicked man, 
Thou shalt surely die. Sure. Yeah. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked. Oh, right? wait a minute. Now, God what? is talking to the watchman. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God said, when I say mm -hmm. to warn the wicked, and then he says to the watchman, if thou dost not speak, what? To warn the wicked from right. his way. I'm going to stop here. The preacher man is supposed to warn you from your way. Amen. That's right. If he is not warning you from your shacking, your drinking, your lying, your cursing, mm -hmm. guess what? He's not God's man. Uh -huh. That's right. What else? That wicked man shall die in his iniquity. Now you know they're false t uh, false preacher. Mm -hmm. God said you're going to die in your iniquity because you have sin in your life mm -hmm. because you're going to church and he's not warning you. Wait a minute now. Go ahead. But his blood will I require in thy hand. He's going to get paid too. Uh -huh. Well, I'm under Bishop so and so. I'm under Reverend Doctor so and so. Yeah, guess right. what? If he didn't warn you from your way, guess what? You and him are going to hell. Right, right. It's not my word. It's not my word. This is God's word. It was written before I got here. Amen. What else? Verse nine. Yeah. Nevertheless. If thou warn the wicked of yes. his way to turn from it. Wait a minute. You got to warn the wicked to turn from his right. way. What they're doing now is giving them license to stay in their way. Uh -huh. But God said turn them from their way. Mm -hmm. What else? If he do not turn from his way. All right. He shall die in his iniquity. Yes. But Love. thou has delivered thy soul. Guess what? I delivered my soul. Amen. Before. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I delivered my soul. I love it. What else? Verse, Verse 13. 13. Mm -hmm. When I shall say to the righteous. Oh, wait a minute. You're not out in the streets. you go going to the church. Guess what? God has a message for you, too. Mm -hmm. Let's see if your preacher is a man of God. What else? Good. That he shall surely live. Uh huh. If he trusts to his own righteousness. Watch out, saints. Mm -hmm. Watch out, righteous. You trust into your righteousness just because you haven't smoked a cigarette in 30 years? That yeah. does not mean you are still saved. Right, That's right. right. Go ahead. Right. And commit iniquity. Mm. Oh, but you get something in your heart mm -hmm. during this time that we're in. Just because you're not out with the saints, you get loose on the standard. Yeah, you start allowing things to creep in because people don't see you as much. You don't mm -hmm. see them as much. Mm -hmm. Now you're sitting there saying, well, I don't really think you take all of that. That's called iniquity. Yes. Amen. All right, what else? All his righteousnesses yes. shall not be remembered. Mm -hmm. You allow iniquity to get in? He said everything. Yep. Everything. All your righteousness. All that praying. All that fasting. All that visiting the sick. All that giving yourself to the things of God. All because you want to let a little leaven leaven the lump. God said all of that. But for his iniquity yes. he committed, he yes. has committed, he shall die for it. Wait a minute. You didn't go back to the club. Mm. You let something get in your heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's this is that. the message. I'm delivering my soul. Mm -hmm. And guess what? This came to me first. I copy and paste. I'm like, yeah. no, hell me. Amen. 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 Search yeah. my life. Yeah. And guess what? Yeah. Now I'm delivering it to you. Why? Because I searched my life and now I'm helping you Amen. to search your life. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. To God. Amen. That's the job, the character of a bishop. If you don't respect the word, how can you be a man or a woman of God? Right. That's God's word. Amen. Right? Think about it. Yes. All right. I like this little saying. What? If it will come up. <laughs> I think it, the battery is dying. <laughs> now it went too fast. Bless the Lord. There we go. You heard this. Some were called. Some were sent. Some just packed their stuff and went. <laughs> But yeah. we've learned what the character of a true bishop Thank is. That's good. Thank you for joining us today. Join us again next Sunday, 9-15. Hold on. Come back at 11 o'clock for our Sunday morning service. Mm -hmm. We invite you Tuesday night for service, Friday night Bible study. And here are all the social media platforms that you can watch our broadcast on. Thank you so much. God bless you.